Lately, SRT has been quite a popular subject. Secure reliable transport is the ability to send video from point A to point B over unreliable networks. It includes a lot of features for coping with things like network lag, dropouts, security, encryption, and things like that. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to wire together several different products from several different brands that will let you cope with SRT over a local intranet, extranet, wide area network, you name it, and give you a lot of different features and high quality to boot. Let's do a quick overview of what we've got here. We have an ADA UHD 100, which is outputting a 4K signal at 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. The HDMI signal is coming into this, the Videon versus Streamer 4K, which is then encoding two signals. One of these is an SRT 4K signal and it is a caller to the vMix uh, system, which has a listener. So we're doing 4K SRT from here to here. vMix has a caller in HD, because we're running this version, this system in HD, has an HD caller. So we're sending an HD signal from the vMix box over to the Kiloview D300. So we're doing SRT from here to there in 4K and SRT from here to there in HD. So we get two examples of caller and listener, and we're also sending a 4K RTSP directly from the Videon unit over to the D300, and we're gonna output that via SDI, which we'll get to in a little bit. Let's start at the beginning of our workflow with the Videon versus streamer. Um, this is the unit and we can see we're coming in 21P30, 2160P30, we're streaming. Um, these are our two uh, encoder and out, output settings um, buttons. So in encoder settings, we can see uh, what our input resolution is, what our quality is. Uh, we're doing H.264 versus H.265. Um, high profile versus main or baseline, how we're encoding our audio. I'm gonna leave all of those settings the same. Um, for output settings, we have uh, all of these different um, abilities to go out to these different, different platforms simultaneously so we can stream to three RTMPs, so Facebook, YouTube, and your own CDN, HLS for local HTTP live streaming, uh, SRT, which um, will get to immediately, multicast, two unicasts, RTSP, and file recording. This unit can do all of those things at the same time. But since we're interested in SRT today, uh, I've turned SRT encoding on, and this is the IP address that I'm broadcasting to from the unit, which is this unit, the unit that the VMAX is on. If I were going to broadcast to the uh, Kiloview D300, that's at dot 80. So I would just enter that in and it would start broadcasting directly to that unit. Um, this is the port that we're going to be listening on uh, on the vMix unit. And uh, this is the latency that we've set at 120 milliseconds and bandwidth. Um, bandwidth is interesting because this is the amount of bandwidth that we can tell SRT to use in the event that it needs to catch up. So. Ordinarily, we try to keep latency as low as possible, but in this case, latency is also our friend. Because SRT has a stable uh, latency, it's a fixed latency, it keeps it the same regardless of um, the network conditions. So when there's a dropped packet or something it needs to catch up on, it will use up to 25% of your bandwidth to catch up on things that it's missed. Uh, down here we have encryption, um, passphrase, I have this turned off because I'm using it over a local intranet. So for the purposes of this demo, we're using the local intranet to send video to and from different devices, but the real application for SRT is to send video point to point to anywhere on earth, which requires a, a good understanding of IT technology and port forwarding and firewalls. And that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but that is the, the where the real benefits of SRT lay. But in any case, uh, we have set up our IP address to send from the Videon unit over to vMix. And now let us add in our SRT signal, which I've got a preset for, I've set an SRT listener. There's also caller uh, and rendezvous modes. And um, 
I've set the port to 5000, which matches, and we don't have any other passphrases using hardware decoder, and we click OK, and we have our video, which is coming in from uh, the camera. Now you can see side by side uh, NDI and SRT, and you can see that there's a little bit of difference in latency. And that's because NDI is really more of a contribution uh, IP uh, protocol and SRT, I would say, is more of a distribution protocol. And they're, they're meant for two different applications. Now I'm going to put our SRT over here in program, and I'm going to go and set up our uh, decoding options. So going into vMix settings under outputs NDI SRT under our program output here, uh, we will go and enable SRT. Uh, we're setting up a caller. Uh, we have a host name of 192.168.1.80, which is our Kiloview D300. Uh, again, port 5000 uh, for its consistency, makes it easy to change. Um, latency of 200 milliseconds, and again, uh, passphrase, um, we're not doing encryption. So now that we've set that up, we click OK. So now we can head over to the D300's uh, UI and we can see that it's got two windows here and a few configurations down here, one of which is um, vMix and it shows a data rate and a resolution and another shows uh, video on our TSP. Um, and then last we have uh, an ADA configuration. And in order to do this demo right, I really need a fourth one. So I'll walk you through how to set up another SRT source. Um, vMix can output two SRTs so we'll go back to vMix here, and I'm going to set up output number uh, two, which is set to input three. I'm going to turn on uh, SRT for this as well to the same IP address, but to a different port. So now we're going to port 5001. So let's add a new option uh, for SRT here. We'll call this um, vMix output two, and the space there. We're going to make it a listener. Listener port is 5001, uh, latency of 200 milliseconds, and click OK. So now we have um, two vMix outputs here. So make sure that it connects. Yep, so that's working as well. So all four of our um, inputs are working, but now I'm going to show you a little bit about what you're seeing on the screens. I've connected a second monitor to the D300 via SDI because the D300 has both an SDI and an HDMI port on it. So now we have an SDI port and we have our HDMI port. So we're driving two monitors off of this. And what is appearing in those monitors depends on what I drag into these different screens. So as I drag and drop these into their different screens, it decodes whatever it is that I'm telling it to. So in this case, I'm sending RTSP and SRT. And if we want, we don't have to just decode this uh, one source. So in, in this scenario, uh, you can think of this as a decoder of SRT or RTSP to a screen in a lobby or to a switcher in a studio. But we can also use it in a variety of other configurations because this unit natively supports multi-view. So I can take two of these sources, and now I have two screens, uh, two different sources. Uh, on this monitor, I'm doing the video on RTSP and the ADA PTZ, and on this one, I'm doing vMix SRT and vMix, uh, two channels of vMix SRT. So that's a two channel split. And then we can do four, where I'm gonna end up um, throwing all four sources up there. So now I've got four different sources going to two different screens. And if that's not a lot, we could just keep adding more sources and we can even uh, do a nine split multi-view. So we have two different monitors that each have nine different sources on them. So you can see the D300 can be used in uh, quite a number of different ways. Um, and we don't have to use them. We can use one as a four screen and one as a two screen. Uh, you can mix and match. And as you can see, it's really easy for me just to drag and drop different kinds of outputs. Um, so I can 
use this almost like an SRT router, if you want to think of it that way. I hope that helped explain a little bit about how SRT works, how these products connect together to form an incredible solution for live remote production or for a variety of other uses as well. If you have any more questions, please check us out at usbroadcast.co. Once again, I'm Eric Pratt, and thanks for watching.